Adam Beasley, senior NFL reporter for Pro Football Network. You can read all their work at profootballnetwork.com. We had some pretty stunning news yesterday, which happened during the show. Dolphins defensive coordinator Vic Fangio is out and on his way to Philadelphia. So a uh, lot of a lot of changes. One that, well, I'll ask you, Beasley. What were you were you completely shocked, or did you see something like this percolating? Because it kind of caught us off guard. Well, well, hello, gentlemen. Thanks for having me on. This is the week of breakups for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, not just <laughs> obviously the defensive coordinator, but maybe the wide receiver as well in a different vein. But yeah, uh, I wouldn't say I was shocked by this simply because. We asked, or I asked, McDaniel, we could go Monday point blank because Vic Fangio coming back, and it was a bit of, ah, well, you know, can't rule anything out. And so that was kind of their first red flag. Um, and it has kind of been an open secret for, I would say, the last month or two of the season um, that there wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, total paradise in Dolphins HQ, uh, some defensive players didn't love some of the decisions that Big Fangio made, didn't love uh, his demeanor at times. Uh, Jalen Ramsey uh, probably had a bloody mouth for as uh, hard as he was biting his tongue at times. And and so they moved on. Now, the broader question is, is it the right move? Uh, not unexpected. Is it the right move? And And that's, I guess, TBD, guys. I mean, you can't replace something good with nothing. Uh, they're going to have to find a replacement. And I think, quite frankly, the Dolphins should have taken a firmer line with Vic and not let him out of his contract. Oh, really? And does it, wow. Yeah. It, Bees, does that, does that say something? Because we talked about this yesterday with Flores, when you just keep turning over coaching staffs. Like, does it is that any kind of question that you have about McDaniel? Because that's another young coach now, and – He's not really figured it out. Two years, you have two different defensive coordinators. Not three years, three different defensive coordinators. Well, I kind of give him a pass for Josh Boyer because he inherited Josh Boyer. I mean, that was part of the, hey, we're going to hire you, Mike, but we've already got your D.C. set up. He wasn't part of that, you know, QB collective group uh, that, you know, McDaniels kind of come up with. And so I don't I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to crush him for, you know, not seeing eye to eye with the guy he inherited. Uh, Vic is a different story, okay? And we should probably go through every angle of this. Uh, Vic, this was never his first choice. And and I don't think uh, that was ever a big secret, and it certainly is abundantly clear now. Uh, He wanted to be the Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator 12 months ago and due in part to uh, events beyond his control, you know, specifically the way that Jonathan Gannon handled his exit, the former defensive coordinator of the Eagles, current Arizona Cardinals head coach, the way he handled his exit kind of screwed up the timing, I think, uh, and maybe the optics a bit for Vic. Uh, and so when you have a team willing to make you the highest paid uh, defensive coordinator, I think, or any coordinator in the history of the game with a very talented roster, um, he's, he's, he's going to think long and hard about it. But you guys got to remember, I mean, there, were, there was a week and a half, two weeks between the time that ESPN says, okay, deal is done. Vic Fangio is going to be the next defensive coordinator. And and the time the Dolphins announced it. And that's pretty rare. And it wasn't just, hey, they're wait, waiting for them to get, you know, he was, a, he, he was a consultant then for the Eagles. Let's just get through the Super Bowl. Uh, there, was, there was some real uncertainty at times. And there was reports at the time, at the time that he was thinking about backing out. And so you're, you're starting to ground, you know, at the ground level of having not the best situation. Uh, you move forward, and look, Mike McDaniel, one of the brightest young coaches in football. I think young is the word, uh, optimal word there. He's a different generation than Vic, probably two or three generations removed from Vic. Uh, Fangio told us one of his favorite moments of the day was driving home, listening to 70s on 7. And to, I don't even think Hockman listens to that station. It's so old. I was actually um, thinking I also enjoy that on the drive home right before you, <laughs> said you that. spend your evenings as well. Um, all right, so you and he would probably have a lot in common. He didn't have a yeah. ton in common with, say, Cam Smith, who they drafted yeah. in the second round. So yeah. all these like little personality things, and just it, it just wasn't a great fit. Now the job opens up in Philadelphia again. Uh, Sean Desai fired. Um, you know, cleaning house there a bit in the defensive side of the ball, uh, and the job he wanted last year comes open. And you combine that with exit interviews and you saw on social media yesterday. uh, I don't know if you had Javon on the air yesterday, but certainly his, uh, 
his Instagram account spoke uh, volumes about him, you know, basically telling, not basically, but effectively telling um, Vic to kick rocks. All these things were a factor. But guys, are the Dolphins a better team because of it? Like, yes, you 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 want people to be happy in their work, and you want the coach and the players to to see eye to eye. That's not that's not essential though. And if you're Mike McDaniel and you now here to your point are on coach number three, defense coordinator number three in as many years, and I went through the reasons why it's not all of his fault, but I mean he could have said no, right? He could have said to Vic today no, or he could have said to uh, the Eagles, oh you want him. Well, I know the league doesn't really love us giving draft picks for assistance, but we're going to work out a deal where you're going to take a player off our hands via trade, and you're going to give us a higher draft pick than you should, and we'll, get in, and, and we'll let Vic out of his contract. Wink, wink, nod, nod. There are ways the Dolphins could have extracted value from an asset they had, um, and they didn't do it. And I, I want to hear from Mike as to why. Uh, the question I want to ask Mike is, uh, if Vic didn't want to leave, would he have been fired this year? Right. That's the question. If, 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 if Vic, uh, well, doesn't, you know, doesn't that, fine. doesn't this information and what you're saying kind of lead you to believe that Vic comes in and says, you know, I think I am done here. I, I my the opportunity, you know, I want it is going to be, uh, mine if I want it. And Mike McDaniel's kind of thinking in his head, Oh, thank God. Yeah. I don't know if thank God's the right word though, because guys, he's still, in in Mike McDaniel's own words, one of the best in-game tacticians on the defensive side of the ball in the history that guy of the game. Stinks. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing is that you're you're you cannot just let that talent walk out the door without a very strong plan B. And I know Anthony Campanelli is a name that you're hearing, linebackers coach, got star of hard knocks as a potential replacement. Love the guy. Seriously, I, I understand why players love him. Are you going to trust the final year? And let's let's be honest. This is the final year of this current core's window with a first-time play caller on defense with all that talent. I would be hesitant about that as well. So there's probably no good answer, but I would hope. And I, you know, we'll, we'll talk to McDaniel about it. How hard did he try to make this situation work? Because there's a reason you gave Vic Fangio four and a half million dollars a year. Is is there an answer? Because I keep hearing Brandon Staley, you know, different guys, you know, they got, got fired or going to get fired or other other coaching staffs. Is there is there a good answer? Because I'm with you. Hawk says he stinks. We talked about it yesterday. Like, the defense was pretty damn good this year. Is there I an answer think. of anybody that could take this very talented defense, when healthy, obviously, very talented defense, and keep them playing at that level? Well, the Panthers have a pretty good D.C. that's getting a bunch of head coaching jobs, and I'm going to mangle his name because I've actually never heard it pronounced. I've only read it. Uh, Averro's last name is E-V-E-R-O. Uh, he used to coach uh, uh, Jalen Ramsey out in L.A., uh, did an excellent job in Carolina on a not a very talented team. Uh, if he doesn't get a job, would he be someone that the Dolphins would consider? Absolutely. He is. He and um, Mike are represented by the same agent. That certainly helps, um, but the, the problem with with hiring someone like that is, is it going to be a one and done situation? Right. If I'm Mike, I don't care. One and done me is fine. Do, you know, if you if you go get a head coaching job and we get another year of of of, of mentoring uh, Campanelli and we feel com- more comfortable with him in 2025, I'm okay with that because this is the year, guys. I don't think we can overstate that this is the season that they have been building for for six years now. And honestly, last year was the year as well, and you know it, it, their defense fell apart and their offense forgot how to play. But if this thing is going to work, it's going to work in 2025. The division is never going to be theirs better for the taking, even better than this year, because the, the Bills are a year older. They have $43 million of cap headaches. They have aging players that aren't particularly good. The, the, the Bills are going to be a dimin- diminished team in 2024. I, you know, we'll see what the Jets do with Aaron Rodgers. I have no confidence with them, and the, the, the Patriots are in a complete rebuild. It has to be now. Are you going to risk that with a complete unknown as a defensive play caller? That's a tough call for me, man. Who on the Dolphins' defense is the happiest? We saw Javon. Javon was on with us on Tuesday, by the way. We were one day off by uh, <laughs> by getting an instant live reaction to someone who I think, based on that uh, and maybe stuff that I've heard off the air, but might not be too uh, angry that Vic Fangio is gone. Who on the Dolphins' defense is the happiest at the news? And who on the Dolphins' defense is the most upset 
by the news? Look, the front, I'll start with the second part of the question. The front seven played great with Vic Fangio. And, you know, Bradley Chubb, career year. I mean, he's, his, best, his best football has come uh, with Vic Fangio. And he's also the highest paid defensive player. I know Ramsey and, and Vic didn't see eye to eye. Ramsey's been a little bit more tactful about his displeasure than <laughs> certainly Cam Smith and, and Javon have in the last couple of days. Um, but that day, you know, Christian Wilkins, who knows if he'll be back, never played better than he did with Vic Fangio, right? Uh, same with Zach Sealer. Help get Zach Sealer paid. Uh, so the, I think there is a tendency, and, and, and Channing, you can tell me if I'm right, there is a tendency when something doesn't work out with a coach, with a GM, even with a high-profile player, there is this pile-on effect, right? Here's all the crap he did wrong. And certainly Brian Flores deserved a lot of that crap. On his way out the door, he got buried in a lot of stuff, and a lot of it was deserved. A lot of it I had heard over time. It was, but still, you can't say that Brian Flores didn't maximize what he had with a not very talented team earlier in, early in his time there, and then he kept together what, what they go one and six, one and seven. And they they were a game away from making the playoffs. Um, I, I, I think it's even more so with Vic now, and and honestly, Channing, you tell me this. Should a, a couple of star players not loving your DC be the reason you get rid of the guy if he's doing his job at a high level? I I don't think so. It's all about it's all about results there. Like you don't like this guy, you don't like that guy. When you asking the question, I thought about Nick Saban, where when Saban's out the door, I'm not going to Alabama, and everybody piles on him. But I look back, bees, and I was like, we were a top five defense. Jason Taylor looks back. He reluctantly stood up and played outside linebacker. And then that bastard went on to win 06 Defensive Player of the Year with Saban's defense he ran. So, like, it, 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 was he a great guy? Is he going to invite us to Thanksgiving dinner? There's no chance you'll ever go to Nick Saban's house. Can that dude call a defense and be effective? Yes. And I think this league's all about winning. I don't give a damn what we think about you as a person off the field. On the field, if you're good, we need to acquire successful assets. Yeah, and, and, and the point I, I've been trying to make all day is that it's easy to break up, right? It's easy to fire somebody. It's easy to move on. What's hard is making it work, right? What's hard is taking all these personalities and people who don't particularly like each other at times but are super talented at what they do and figuring out a way to make it work best for the team. And, again, we haven't had a chance to talk to McDaniel yet, so maybe – you know, he'll tell us how, you know, how hard it would have been, how, how impossible it would have been to make all these things work, particularly if the D.C. The DC wants to be out the door. To me, I, I, honestly, I don't care. I don't care if he wants to leave. We just made you the highest paid coordinator in the history of the game. You're going to give us at least one more year. OK, that that, that that would have been unless there was language that we don't know of in the contract where he had an out. But I kind of feel like that would have been reported by now. Right. Like or if, just if, an if, understanding. If, didn't didn't Bill Parcells or someone have that understanding with Wayne Heisinger or Stephen Ross that hey, when I'm done, I can walk away with no. Uh, I mean, he walked away. But with he's money, not but. done. That's the thing. It's not like he's retiring. He's 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 moving on in his mind to greener pastures. He's going home to be closer to his family, and to go to a, an organization he probably likes more. Like like we've all had jobs we don't love in the moment, right? Well, maybe not you, Hawk. I'm sure everything's been great in your career. But Jane I mean, and I have jobs that we have loved in the, we have loved in the moment. <laughs> and we suck it up, and we professionals, and we do what we can. I can't and wait. It's like a clock, strategy, and it's seven. That's all time. I do. It's all I do the entire show. Okay. When when does 6 o'clock roll around so I can tune in <laughs> 70s on 7 and, and decompress? Hey, and geez, I, pl I, I play for Cam Cameron. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, again, we don't, we are not inside, right? We don't know exactly what went down. But everyone knows Vic's a cranky guy. He is, the, like, honestly, if he wasn't coaching football, he'd be hanging out in a golf cart in the villages right now, okay? <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that, that's Vic. But he can sure as hell call a defensive play, a game, right? And, 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 yeah, they had some breakdowns. They had some communications issues this past year. I think that was as much on the players as it was on any coaching. When, 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 you know, when they, their top line defensive backs went out, they were a huge bust. Is, is that Vic's fault? The guys aren't listening? I mean, I don't know. So we'll, we'll have to see how this plays out. And maybe they have, maybe Mike's got a great plan and they have a home run hire. But I will say this if the, if the replacement is Anthony Campanelli, there's going to be 
kind of a feeling of like, what did we just do, right? What, 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 what are we a better team as the Dolphins? The Dolphins are trying to think, are we a better team now than what we were two weeks ago with Vic Pangio as our defensive coordinator? That's going to be a tough question to answer. Hey, Bees, serious question. Will the Dolphins ever in my lifetime make me not feel miserable about myself? <laughs> I mean, they dropped 70 on the Broncos. That was a fun day, wasn't it? That was a great yeah. week. I think it would two weeks playoff. even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be nice to be not talking about this and be talking about getting ready for the Ravens, right? Uh, that would be fun. <laughs> I don't want to play the Ravens again. <laughs> like, we saw just, what happened in that we're, game. We're running out of time, but I, I like you're you're telling me that Vic Fangio was so good. We have a loaded, stacked defense. You're telling me he was so good that he maximized them. That there's no one out there that can maximize this defense better because I, I didn't feel that way. And you know, career I, year I have for a Christian, long extension. Career year for career Christian Wilson. Career year yeah. for Bradley Chubb. Career year for Andrew Van Ginkle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah. They, they, I understand you might not like the guy, but he he got results. And and unless they can convince me that the next guy is going to get similar, if not better, results, I'm going to really scratch my head about the, the wisdom of this move. And bees quickly talking about coaches. I got to ask about Bill Belichick. Why is he not the pretty girl at the mall? Why, like it, the Falcons are the only ones talking to. I thought Bill Belichick. They don't even want him. No, now they don't want him. Like he's not even the pretty girl. He's the ugly girl at the mall. Like wh why does nobody want Bill Belichick? Well, I mean, not to get ageist here, but there's a reason they just now made the Golden Bachelor, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's, too, he's too old. He can still coach if you. But bees, if you give me three, four years, and you can do. To my organization, what you did for the Patriots for twenty, like okay, you're not giving me ten. Give me four. Give me, give me three. Like he, he can take. I believe that he's good enough to turn an organization around. I, I actually have an opposite view. I think if you're going to bring in Bill Belichick, you bring him in to be the missing piece. But you have to have a quarterback established that you know that can win. You have to have defensive personnel that you know that you can win. He has not really shown in 25 years an ability to build something from scratch and th that's what he'd be he'd be asked to do i mean obviously Atlanta's is not totally you know barren of talent but has he since again that's a big since because he might be the best player in the history of team sports but since tom brady and including before tom brady the way he handled his quarterbacks wasn't exactly great so and guys i mean it's not like like Pete Carroll, I would say, oh, effervescent. He'd be a breath of fresh air. You know, how much fun, what energy would he bring into the organization, even though he's a little bit older? It's not exactly the personality of Bill Belichick, right? I mean, yeah, he'll give you a quick boost, maybe ticket sales-wise and enthusiasm on the fan base, uh, but he's not Mr. Personality. So you're asking a guy to be the face of the franchise who's a mercenary. That's what he would be, right? At this point, three, four years, I'm in to try to win a title and to break Don Shula's record. He's a mercenary. And he's not exactly likable. And his track record without Tom Brady and certainly in the last five years in general has not been great. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that people aren't clamoring for him because it needs to be the perfect spot for him. And I guess he hasn't found it yet. Also, the guy stinks. <laughs> You're talking about from like a deodorant standpoint? <laughs> I don't know, these Guy stinks. Vic Fangio stinks. <laughs> Belichick stinks. They all stink. Terry Rogier stinks. Everybody stinks. Except Adam uh, Beasley. You are, you are cranky today. Go I'm to channeling my old Hank Goldberg. Goldberg. I'm channeling my old Hank Goldberg. I'm trying to really embrace the afternoon drive shift. All right. Well, cheer up, my friend. All Please right. Jeff, tag on. Enough out of you. No, I'm just teasing. Thanks, Beasley. Read Adam Beasley's work, Pro Football Network, profootballnetwork.com. Enjoy talking football with him.